They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Okay, boys, I need some help here. Okay, so we ran into this problem when we were doing the fantasy football season where my trade deadline for the fantasy football season and the majority of the leagues, the majority of leagues, pretty much all the leagues that I actually run was week 14, and I continued to make trade target videos, sell high videos until week 14, but a lot of other people watching the videos, their trade deadline was week 11, actually. So what I need from y'all now is I need y'all to go to the comment section, or hopefully you're watching this as a live premiere, as you all should be, but let me know when your own trade deadline is, because if it's going to be up in a week, if it's going to be up in two weeks, if it's already passed, I want to know because leagues vary. Not everybody's playing in the same format. So, of course, if your trade deadline was this week or last week and the majority of everyone else's isn't for two, you're still going to have to be watching these videos for the time being because I'm going to cater to the majority. Of course, we always give personalized advice in the premieres as well as on Patreon. But for the specific videos that I'm making, I need to have a good feel on when these trade deadlines are coming up. Now, outside of that, the only real announcement that I have is if you have not dropped a like on the video, if you have not subscribed to the channel by now, what are you doing with your life? Make sure you go down there, fix that right now. More importantly, instead of just subscribing to the channel, hit that bell next to the subscribe button. That way you can come out to all the premieres with everyone else. That way I can give you personalized trade, waiver wire, and roster construction advice as we all watch the video together. Because 99% of the time, I promise you, I'm hanging out in that live chat. Now, today, I had a motor learning. I also had a neuromuscular exam. So I was having to cram for those exams as we premiered the video. But outside of that, I, it should be good to be at every premiere going forward. So that's it for the announcements. Let's jump into it. And let's get into these sell high players. And our first one, going to be Bradley Beal. And now, I understand Bradley Beal you can't necessarily call him a sell high because his value was definitely a lot higher at the beginning of the year. But I think that it could be downhill for Bradley Beal right now. So obviously he's dealing with this hip injury. Obviously it's not too concerning. It's not an Anthony Davis type injury. But what is concerning is the direction of the Washington Wizards. Now, I already talked about why I wanted to be selling Russell Westbrook in last week's video in terms of the long-term projection on these players during our fantasy basketball playoffs. Now, I understand these guys, when they play, can be hyper-productive. But we have to sit here and ask ourselves. We go, okay. So, the Wizards right now are 17-32. and 32. They've lost four in a row, probably because of the Bradley Beal injury, but still, they are 13th in the East. At this point, they really have no shot at that play-in tournament. So if you're looking at a player like Bradley Beal, who is their franchise star, who is the player that they have so much value soaked into, regardless of if they decide to have him with the franchise for the next decade, regardless if they decide to sell him next year, we know that all their eggs are in his basket. So what is going to be the real incentive here for them to continue to play Bradley Beal throughout the rest of the season? have a higher risk of injury now that he's coming off this hip injury really the only thing that they could do is lower his trade value the only thing that they could do is make him play at 90 percent of his full self look a little bit worse than you'd be accustomed to and then maybe expect a lesser return on what they could get in trade next year now i don't want to bring up russell westbrook here because westbrook Kind of the same scenario. You can make the argument that the team doesn't have a lot invested into him based on that contract, based on the fact that their windows are not going to be lining up for a productive Russell Westbrook and this Wizards team to actually make a title run. But Bradley Beal, it's a little bit different here. 27 years old, so it's not like they're continuing to try to develop him. So my worry is, yeah, he can still be productive when he plays, but how many games is he going to be playing? Because there's no incentive for this Washington team to roll him out on back-to-backs. What I would want if I was Bradley Beal, if I was if I was Bradley Beal's agent, I'd be saying, hey, we're done playing back-to-backs the rest of the year. I, I do not want my client doing that. There's no reason for him to. We've already seen how productive he is. We've already seen the caliber of player he is. I mean, if we look at the past month, he's only played nine games. In those nine games, he's had 26 points, three and a half rebounds, five assists. 
and pretty much no defensive stats to go along with this. So Bradley Beal can be productive when he plays. But we're at the point of the year going, okay, some of these teams are just completely out of it. What's the real incentive here? And in the case of Bradley Beal, in the case of Russell Westbrook, I don't, I don't want to focus in on Westbrook just because we talked about him last week. But I'm not going to see a ton of incentive for this Washington team to lean on them, playing back-to-backs, as well as playing 36 minutes a night, because it just doesn't make sense with the incentives of the franchise. Okay, so now let's get our next player up here. And I alluded to him in the video today, but I had some people reaching out to me on Patreon going, Mason, you don't like Ricky Rubio? What is wrong with you? And I was saying, okay, guys, what do you all expect with Ricky Rubio here? What, what am I missing? Okay, Rubio is another situation of a veteran player that is playing on a team that has absolutely nothing going for it in 2021. When we're looking at Ricky Rubio, He's also playing in a rotation that now has D'Angelo Russell back. Now, I know D'Angelo Russell has been a very polarizing player. I personally don't really like him, but he is only 25. This team did significantly invest into him by trading Andrew Wiggins and a first-round pick that looks like it's going to be very, very high. So you can assume that this front office wants to see D'Angelo Russell. They want to see Anthony Edwards playing heavy minutes. Edwards is 19, Russell's 25, Ricky Rubio's 30. Ricky Rubio's also a free agent after next year, and we can assume that you're not going to be expecting this Wolves team to be that competitive in 2022. Now, I know if we go through and look at Ricky Rubio the last 30 days, and he looks pretty decent, pretty much just in two categories, but they were the two that you drafted Ricky Rubio for. He is averaging both eight assists and two steals. So I guess you could make the argument in category formats that he is still, I don't want to say reliable, but still can provide you something where I'm sitting here going, you know what? I don't see it. The upside isn't there. I think the minutes are going to be dropping now that D'Angelo Russell's back in the rotation. They've been dedicated on playing Anthony Edwards a ridiculous amount of minutes every day just because this is their star. This is the player that they want to be investing everything into. Obviously, Carl Anthony Towns is mainly that guy, but they need to see Anthony Edwards pan out. So they're going to be giving the minutes to D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Edwards. Ricky Rubio was a low ceiling player to begin with. So let me know if I'm missing something here. I, I just don't understand why people are talking about him as if he's anything. Now, another player that I would be fine just selling for literally nothing, selling for peanuts is going to be Buddy Heald. And it's kind of funny because Buddy Heald is also one of those players that is going to be great in some categories. I mean, he's making over four three-point shots made a game over the past 30 days. And he's also providing you 17 points a night, five rebounds, three assists. But if we're looking at this Kings team, a very common theme you're going to be finding in this video is identifying the teams that have nothing going for them in 2021 that have young talent on the roster to give minutes to and then we're going to be looking at the veterans that are currently seeing the minutes, currently seeing the production, and trying to go through and sell. Because Buddy Heald right now, 28 years old. It's not like they are continuing to trying to develop Buddy Heald. And this team has lost four in a row. This team is now 12th in the West. And Tyrese Halliburton needs more minutes. I mean, he is playing about 30 minutes a night right now, which I just don't understand. If you look at what he was doing at the very beginning of the year, if you look at what the value investment into Tyrese Halliburton is, he's the player that needs to be seeing the minutes. I think Buddy Heald, who is currently playing like 36 minutes a night over the past 30 days, is going to see those minutes dip probably down about 29. I wouldn't even be surprised if they start resting him on back-to-backs, start to telling him, hey, just take the night off. Man, we're not playing in the play-in tournament. Tyrese Halliburton is our guy for the future. So Buddy Heald, I know he's not going to be a piece that you can get a ton of value for, but if you can just throw him in a trade package for pretty much anything, if you're playing in like a 10, eight man league, I think you should be able to find something about equivalent on the waiver wire. If you just continue to do your work and continue to make those moves. So yeah, don't be afraid to throw him in any trade. Okay. So now this next trade, I'm sorry, this next player is going to be a little bit bold because we know he can be elite, but it's going to be James Harden. Okay, so I'll say a couple things here. A, the main reason I want to bring up James Harden 
is the fact that we've been saying that Kevin Durant could come back pretty much whenever he wanted, that they were trying to give him as much rest time for the playoffs as possible. And now James Harden suffers this hamstring injury. And coincidentally, we have Kevin Durant returning this same week. Now, I don't see this as a coincidence. I think KD is going to be 100% good to go. And James Harden, I know everybody is floating around the quote that saying he is going to take 10 days. But no, he's going to be reevaluated in 10 days. So I'm expecting this to be a two to three week injury, especially considering that this team is first in the East. And I understand you could make the argument and outside of Nikola Jokic, I would probably make the argument that James Harden was playing at MVP type levels this season. But now that KD is coming back in, I think that this Nets team pretty much is just going to keep their spot as a top two team in the Eastern Conference. And it's definitely sad that we are not going to have the big three playing together as much as we wanted. I mean, I wanted Kevin Durant to come back. I wanted to see what this team was going to look like with Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and James Harden all in the court together. And it looks like we may not have that for a very long time just because this team has title aspirations. James Harden has played a ridiculous amount of minutes and has a ridiculous usage rate if you just look at the past five years. So I think it makes a lot of sense for James Harden to kind of coast and just make sure that he is going to be healthy for the real life NBA playoffs. And I think that means he could potentially be missing some time during the fantasy basketball playoffs. So I know you're not going to be selling for nearly as much as you would get if he was 100% healthy. But to be honest, I just want to see what you can get right now. Now, of course, don't be going out and selling them just for anybody. Don't be selling them for Ja Morant. (laughs) But still, if you can get a decent return, that's something I would look to do. Okay, so speaking of a player with a star coming back into the rotation, let's go over to Tobias Harris, who we mentioned on the video last week, but I want to just echo myself and saying, hey, if you didn't listen to us last week, make sure you do it now. Make sure you were selling Tobias Harris with Joel Embiid coming back. Now, if we look at the past month, Tobias Harris has played 15 games, and in these 15 games, He has been an elite fantasy basketball asset, especially in category formats where he has shot 54% from the field, 91% from the free throw line. He's made 21 points a game, seven rebounds a game, four assists to go along with it. Now, of course, Tobias Harris was the player that their half court offense was running through. You're not gonna ask Ben Simmons to be setting that much up. Ben Simmons gets the majority of his production in transition. The majority of the value he brings to the 76ers is actually on the defensive side of the ball. So with no Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris was asked to do a ton. But now that Joel Embiid's coming back, Tobias Harris simply isn't going to have to do that. I mean, if you look at the last two games played with Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris has averaged 15 points a night, 8 rebounds, and and 3.5 assists. Now I know this is a very small sample size. We're not going to be expecting these same exact numbers going forward. But just knowing that you should be expecting this drop-off, and I really haven't been hearing anybody else talk about this, I think Tobias Harris is someone that you can still sell for a profit. Okay, so let's get our last player up here. Someone that was recently traded, someone that we said lost value after he got traded, but I didn't realize how much value he was going to lose. This is Aaron Gordon. Okay, so with Aaron Gordon, yeah, you look at the transition from Orlando to Denver, and you see, oh crap, the percentages have gone way up. And that's what we expected. You expected Aaron Gordon coming into a rotation with way more talent in it. Nikola Jokic getting him looks while he's cutting to the basket. You'd expect the percentages to be up. But the problem is the volume is so far down. This is a team with Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, as well as Michael Porter Jr., who is coming on with extremely high percentages himself. And it just feels like that Aaron Gordon's dip in production is being a little bit overshadowed by the fact that so many people everywhere are talking about how good of a trade this Aaron Gordon deal was for the Denver Nuggets because you look at the Nuggets and they are possibly the hottest team in the Western Conference Conference right now. Now, if you go back to the last 18 games of theirs, I know that does go into a little bit of when they did not have Aaron Gordon, but still, they've won 15 out of the last 18 games And all the narrative everywhere across just casual NBA podcasts are, hey, that Aaron Gordon trade made the Denver Nuggets a contender. That Aaron Gordon trade just completely changed the West. And it looks like that may be true. But what's also true is that Aaron Gordon trade 
hurt Aaron Gordon's fantasy production. And if you can use just the positive buzz around his name to flip him, that's something I would look to do. Okay, now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Of course, if y'all did, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment. And more importantly, if you have not subscribed to the channel right now, what are you doing? We are so close to hitting that milestone. And yeah, that's it. I'll see y'all with the video tomorrow.